Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another one of the Capture One in Five Minutes episode. That still doesn't feel right to say. I feel like that's too wordy. Anyway, listen, in this episode, we're going to be talking about sharpening, getting the most out of sharpening in your images. So with that introduction out of the way, let's get started. With respect to sharpening in Capture One, according to the team there, there's three moments of sharpening or three types of sharpening that happen. There's capture sharpening, there's creative sharpening, and then there's output sharpening. So with respect to what we're about to do, we're going to be tackling the first one, capture sharpening. And that's when you have the image here and you have the sharpening tool. And what you're doing here is you're punching into an area so you can see it nice that is in focus. We're going to take off the focus mask right now and a slight motion blur here, but again, relatively in focus. And this is where you want to be when you're working on the sharpening tool. Now, you're going to influence the amount of sharpening overall. If you push this too much, you'll start to get those weird effects along edges where you'll start to see the halos. So this is why you probably don't want to be sharpening too much because you're going to get a really weird looking effect on your image. So let's go ahead and reset that. Typically when I'm working with the sharpening amount, I'm looking at 75 to about 200 to 50 around there, but staying in between there. So you're not going to be impacting too much. The reason that is, is because again, there's three levels of sharpening. There's sharpening with the capture method, with the sharpening tool, and then the creative and output sharpening. The creative is when you're looking at adjusting clarity and structure. So again, adding sharpness in a different way with respect to clarity, it's only impacting the midtones. And then there's output sharpening. When you actually export your image, it sharpens a little bit for the destination you're sending it to, and you can customize that as well. I don't wanna get into too much detail about that. What I will say is that when you're working with this sharpening tool in Capture One, you don't wanna make it too sharp. You wanna to get to a relatively comfortable level and leave a little bit of breathing room for that output sharpening at the least. So as you guessed, the amount of sharpening will impact the amount. The radius is the pixel size of the sharpening kernel. What's a sharpening kernel? This, I'm not pushing it way above one. It's usually saying 0.5 to like 1.2, 1.3. Usually I have it just under one and that's how I impact sharpening. So I'm just gonna pull this up a little bit. Um, this is way too high for me. So let's get down to 230. Um, and again, it's, it's hard for you guys to see the difference here because the image is already pretty sharp. But again, at least I want you guys to know what these tools do. The threshold slider here will minimize the sharpening effect in areas that lack contrast. So for example, the sky here, we don't want any sharpening to be happening here, especially because there's still a bit of noise in here. So this threshold, we're going to be, you know, three or under, I think three might even be a little bit too high because it starts to impact our subject as well. So I'd recommend two and a half or lower just to make sure that, you know, any areas that don't have a good amount of contrast, don't have sharpening going on, but your subject isn't being impacted either by this sort of mitigated process. And lastly, you have halo suppression. And as you would have guessed, suppresses the halos in the image. So if you really go extreme with the sharpening, you can see, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if this image is gonna show it as well. Maybe I should have picked a better image, but this will mitigate the halos that appear around these edges, those little white halos you get when you sharpen an image too much. Anyway, this is more about explaining the sharpening tool as a process and what the sliders do, but also reminding you guys or making you guys aware that there's three types of sharpening that happen in Capture One. So you don't want to take this and slide it as much as you can. Again, use it sparingly, get it just before the point, that final point, and rely on output sharpening to carry you across the goal line. I hope you guys found this useful because when I learned about this sharpening, it really changed how I edit my pictures. If you guys have something specifically you want to learn, let me know in the comments below. And if you're thinking about picking up Capture One, please do consider using my link because it does help me and help the channel out. Again, no pressure, I'm just saying, if you're thinking about it, support your guy. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Gadget, and I'll see you guys next time.